everybody, Norm from Tessa here at New York Comic Con. This massive booth next to this massive arcade cabinet is the Arcade 1UP area. John from Arcade 1UP. Yep. You guys have been around for just over a year now yeah, just in stores, but it's exploded. It's crazy, right? I mean, the, the community, the fan community has really supported us. I feel like retro gaming is back in a big way. You know, we have all the, you know, the next gen systems, but there's always room for nostalgia, mm -hmm. you know? I, I think like good content is good content, like a good song or a good video game. Well, you and, guys kind of went through the history of, yes. of arcades, right? The oh, whole yeah. idea, of course, is these are arcades that you can buy right. that are a little smaller than what you find, in, you know, in, in sure. the actual arcade, uh, but they're, they fit your home and you build them, you assemble it yourself, almost like Ikea, flat pack. Right? Exactly, right? Because, you know, we wanted to find a solution where, one, it's affordable, two, it's accessible, right? Yeah, we, we found a way to actually package it so it can be available at retail. People can just pick it up, mm -hmm. and then you're right. It's, it's so much easier to put together. But one of the really great parts of like Arcade 1UP is trying to get that arcade feel. And a lot of it is not just the games, but the artwork you see outside. So yeah. I say it's like high-end collectibles. Yeah, some which, people in the community yeah. are very, have their eyes on that side art. Not only the stuff that they remember, like you have Ninja Turtles, which has yeah. classic art, but also just new takes on things like Space Invaders, like exactly. beautiful Space Invader right. art, and people even modding theirs aftermarket. Yep. You started with some very classic, yep. like original video games. You had you know, Galaga, Space Invaders, combos, but now moving into more of the, the early 90s. Yes, exactly. So, so what are the games you have now? So we're going to the early 90s. Um, first of all, Street Fighter is a part of Wave 1. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right, we're picking games for a couple reasons, right? The fan community is telling us what games to bring out, but also there's a history to it, mm. right? So the first wave was very iconic uh, games, and now we're going into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, our first four-player game that'll be out uh, very soon. Actually, it's starting to roll out right now, so mm. if you find it at Walmart, make sure you pick it up right away. Um, but that was like one of the iconic 90s games. We also have like uh, Marvel superheroes that will be right out releasing soon. The, one of those games from the 2000s era. And then also a very iconic game for the 80s, which is Star Wars. Yes. And it comes Vector with graphics. Vector graphics, uh, you know, and it has all three games Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, which a lot of many people have not played, which is an expansion pack for it, and Return of the Jedi. Mm. And the yoke that we've created for it, aftermarket yokes go for like $400, $500. We were able to get something very close to be able to sell it for $500 total. Yeah, these are very yeah. customized experiences. Totally. Now, in terms of the, the purity of the experience, yeah. you know, who's working on this, the emulation uh, and how do you choose for our very standard controllers and buttons oh, with the sticks? Yeah. How do you choose what goes into the parts? So that's, that's the thing. I mean, we want to make sure that we really capture the authentic <laughs> experience, right? And so in terms of the code, Right. We use like the experts in the industries, the emulation experts like Other Oceans and uh, Code Mystics, right? Mm -hmm. And also we have our own proprietary emulation that we also use in-house. But we make sure, not only that, it's, it's important to have QA testers that know the game in and out. So they, they can see like, oh, this is a bug that should be in the game. Or like, especially in fighting games, we work with Justin Wong, who's like one of the best fighting, pro fighting games, uh, you know, in the entire world. So, you know, we give him builds, he tests out like Marvel, uh, you know, our Marvel game and make sure that all the combos are there. So yeah, the authenticity is very important to us. Uh, whether, you know, sometimes we, we pick different uh, button configurations or button types, if it's like Sanwa or Hap, depending mm -hmm. on what's best for the game. So we're really into that kind of stuff. But the standardized thing is that they're all using the same type of display. They're all the same structure, at least for the stand-ups. Well, so here's the thing. I'm glad you bring that up. So the first wave, has the form factor has been pretty much similar, right? Mm. Uh, but yeah, the buttons are, are, are really good. But then also, we're getting into different form factors, right? If you see our Star Wars uh, cabinet, you see that it's, it's a, yes. looks closer to the original. We also uh, announced Burger Time, which has the the chef, you know, mm -hmm. and it has a little cutout. So yeah, we're trying to vary it up. So when we're looking at it is when people are collecting five, six, seven, you know, pieces, whatever, it looks like a, a real arcade. Yeah. yeah. Slightly miniaturized, yeah. although there's a riser. Yeah, we, exactly. And, and, yeah. and here's the thing. I mean, we made it at three-quarter scale. So one, it, it's, it's easier to move around. Many people don't have a space for a full size. And it's, you know, the full size are heavy as hell. Sure, <laughs> right? yeah. But, Dan, they were $3,000. This is a tenth of this, uh, of the, a tenth of this price and a tenth of the, of the weight. Yeah. And yeah. also, we have the, um, 
Cocktail Cabinet. Cocktail Cabinet. Yeah. That, so we uh, announced uh, during your Comic Con a black series. Because someone may not want like a big yellow <laughs> cocktail table, but sure. the Black Series has a very elegant design and, and something we call like functional furniture. Hey, it works as well a coffee table. Totally. Uh, and of course, people are putting this together. I've noticed that in oh, the yeah. community, there are people who are creating aftermarket parts with backup yeah. lights, replacing the artwork. Is that something you guys are behind? Also, that's, that, we're behind it. Not only behind it, we're taking the. We're taking those ideas and incorporate it itself, so you mm. don't have to go to aftermarket. But like a lot of our newer cabinets, uh, Golden uh, Golden Tea has a lit marquee. Star Wars has a lit marquee. The limited edition of Marvel has a lit marquee. And mm -hmm. hopefully, our goal is everything uh, going forward will have a lit marquee and a mm. riser. You know, mm. hopefully. And the, the idea is more licenses, more games, yes, more, more license factors. Exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Exactly. It is the ability to pull, put an arcade in your home, the thing that we all dreamed of when we were that's, kids. I think that's the magic of it. You know, I've always wanted to have a, you know, a whole arcade in my house, but again, I never had the size nor the resources to do it. Now people are being able to, I mean, $300, $400 is not so bad. I think it's a no-brainer. Yeah, and of no. course it gives you a chance to put something like this <laughs> on New York Comic Con, a, a 16 massive, foot? Yeah. yeah, 16 foot. Yeah. Okay, super cool. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you, John. Thank you so much.